it wasn't that long ago. We can only wonder if there was life on other planets. And if so, what was it like? At the NASA Ames Research Center at Moffett Field, scientist Natalie Bataya is trying to replace the planets of our imagination with reality. Born and raised in the Bay Area and educated in the Bay Area, and here I am working in the Bay Area on NASA's, in my opinion, it's, this is just the biggest thing NASA's got going on right now. Um, the Kepler mission is a Silicon Valley mission. This is a Bay Area mission, and we should all be very proud of what's going on here. Okay. Stars, so Batalya is the deputy science team director of the Kepler mission, a search for inhabitable planets in our galaxy. By our definition, the fundamental requirement for life is the existence of water on the surface. So we look for planets that are not too close to their parent stars that water would boil away, and not too far from their parent stars that water would freeze up. There's this kind of Goldilocks zone where the temperature is just right for liquid water to pool on the surface. That zone we call the habitable zone. And it's planets in that region around its parent star that we're, we're really giving high priority to. T minus 10, 9. NASA eight, launched the Kepler seven, photometer in March 2009 six, five, in a quest to find planets four, that might possibly three, sustain life. Two. Engine start, one, zero, and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with Kepler on a search for planets in some way like our own. That's right, we have here now uh, the new set of planets. How do scientists spend their days at NASA? Well, Bataya and her team review the information that keeps coming back from Kepler. We've got a pipeline that analyzes that data and looks for dimmings in brightness that happen when a planet in its orbit about its parent star passes exactly between the telescope and the parent star, thereby blocking out some of the light from that star. And Kepler is able to detect a change in brightness that's about 20 parts per million. You know, imagine you had a million light bulbs and you took just 20 away. That's the brightness change that Kepler needs to be able to detect with high precision. This past June, the Kepler team released its first catalog of planet candidates. The data indicates there may be a planet orbiting one of the thousands of stars Kepler is observing. There are 700 of them, 700 of them. Even if half of them turn out not to be planets, we are still almost doubling the roster of known exoplanets in our galaxy with one publication. Dr. Natalie Bataya has been the co-investigator for the Kepler mission for the past four years. However, she wasn't always interested in a career in science. Science isn't something that I thought about as a kid doing. It's, I didn't know what it meant to be a scientist, really. When I took my first physics class, that really opened up the world to me. You know, to see how the universe can be explained with mathematics was, was profound to me. Um, to know that the universe is not just chaos, that there's order. Just like a lot of other kids, Natalie was inspired by the space program. I think that the space shuttle program that the United States implemented in the 1980s had a profound effect on me. It was very interesting and compelling to me. And, and I realized in my early years of college, you know, that if I thought, what was my dream job? Well, to be an astronaut, you know, that's, that's my dream job. Um, so to work for the space program, to support the space uh, program, I think, was a seed in my brain um, that blossomed in college. The person who ultimately ended up looking for life on other planets started as an intern at UC Berkeley. In college, I had an internship that was very astronomy specific. And once I was exposed to science, and once I took my first classes and understood what it really meant, I, I was hooked. It was just very, very compelling. By the time the Kepler mission comes to a close in 2012, Dr. Bataya and her team hope to have found planets similar in size and distance from their parent stars as Earth, planets that could possibly sustain life. I'm a closet optimist. <laughs> I, I think, and there's good scientific reasons to think, that Earth-sized planets are going to be common. It's going to be difficult to find Earth twins orbiting a star like our sun at exactly the same distance. That's going to be more challenging, but I'm optimistic that we're gonna get there. 
We're, gonna, we're going to be able to find an Earth twin out there. The Kepler mission fulfills the human desire to explore the world beyond the borders of home, a spirit of discovery that Dr. Battaglia says is etched in our DNA. To be able to look up and say, we're, we're not alone. Not only are there other worlds out there like Earth, but, but there might actually be life out there like us. That's, well, what more profound quest could there be? Maybe Edward was right. Perhaps we aren't alone out here.